Joining us now first on CBC, glad to have these uh, gentlemen, Roger Goodell, the Commissioner of the National Football League, Lowell McAdam is Chairman and CEO of Verizon. And, and the way I understand it, on the NFL app, uh, uh, Commissioner Goodell, we used to be able to watch uh, NFL games. It, this, this extends the, um, the, the availability of that to, to be on Verizon. I'm trying to figure out whether this is good for you, Lowell, or not, because now <laughs> AT&T and T-Mobile can now have access to this. But it, it certainly, the distribution for NFL is, is greatly uh, increase from this. Well, Joe, I, uh, I guess I'd start first with our thoughts and prayers for yes. everyone over at Times Square, of course. But um, for this relationship, I think why it's so great, it's great for our consumers, for our fans, uh, because the game, the NFL games are going to be much more accessible on mobile devices. And uh, that's something that we think our fans will really enjoy. We see more and more of our fans moving f to new devices, particularly their phone, to get content. And we are going to work together to not only stream games, but also bring other content across a number of great media properties that uh, Lowell's uh, creating as his assets across the Yahoo brands and across Go90 and other great uh, opportunities for our fans to be able to enjoy NFL football. Lowell, there's a tall, uh, handsome gentleman over here video uh, <laughs> some of this. Um, he looks familiar. We'll you, uh, Tim Armstrong, this is going to be through uh, some of your, your properties uh, that, that Tim might have something to do. Yeah, all, all of our properties, Joe. But uh, look, we've been partners with the NFL since 2010, and it's been great for the Verizon uh, shareholder and for our customers. What this does is it expands that across all of the Verizon properties. As you know, we've been moving very heavily into digital through our Oath properties, Yahoo and AOL. And, and to go to Yahoo Sports now via your mobile device and to be able to watch any game, preseason, regular season, playoff, Super Bowl, is something nobody else offers. And we've got a... Uh, uh, the number one reach to millennials over mobile now through those properties, and uh, we think we can expand it uh, as we go into the 18, 19, 20, and 21 season. I have a million questions. Well, I do. <laughs> not, 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 well, let's, let's exhaust what we need to know uh, uh, about this, because this is, so am I going to be able to watch I'm not going to say the Bengals. Let's say I happen to like some other team now. Let's say I've adopted, uh, I don't know, the Eagles or the Patriots or I'm afraid to. Fairweather friends. Yeah, Fairweather. <laughs> no, no, this is I gave him, no, I gave him 30 years. I mean, okay. it, but, but let's say I want to watch. Can I watch any game I want on my on my phone? Yeah, it's uh, it's in market. And that's some of the differences that you see. It'll be in market as well as out of market and literally every game. And. You know, Roger said this, it'll not just be the game. We'll have highlights, we'll have original content, we'll have behind the scenes, all of that on Yahoo Sports. And this is the first step for us, Joe, on, on building this as a sports pillar of the company. So we have NFL, we have relationships with the NBA, other leagues, and we're going to be expanding this, but the NFL is our cornerstone part. Does any of this, though, compete directly or even indirectly with so many of your other network partners? And how do they feel about it? You know, Andrew, that's a big part of this. We retained our mobile rights right. uh, in our negotiations with our networks, and we want to make sure that whatever we do is complementary uh, with the network partners. We think this is reaching consumers that aren't actually watching on television. They're looking to watch on other devices. And we want to make sure that we're there. That's uh, part of the changing television landscape and the media landscape that we need to be in those places. But and if I'm broadcasting the game on linear and he's broadcasting the game on mobile, over time, given the way television is going, more people are going to watch. And how's that going to affect my... That, that's happening regardless, Andrew, right? I mean, you see the linear model. Yeah, look, we've been predicting this for years, that it's beginning to break down. Right. You see more and more, especially the younger generation, never had service into their home. So they don't have access to the NFL, and this gives them access. So I think we work very complimentary. So when we see viewership in week 10 for the NFL down 18%, which brings the whole year to a decline of 7%, according to J.P. Morgan, is that, as Lowell says, a secular decline? Have we seen the best days for NFL ratings when it comes to linear viewing? And is this well, a, a I recognition think I, I of I think you'd step back and talk about what's happening to ratings overall. Uh, the NFL's ratings are 25 out of 30 of the top-rated shows in, in sports and in, in all of entertainment this year. So I don't, I don't, I don't take your premise at all. Okay. I would say that 
fans are going to different devices to consume media. Right. Right. And so you have to be on those devices. Arthur, let, me ask, let me ask it this way. In terms of worrying about saturation, and I've talked to you for years uh, about this, you've got this, this precious thing, and, right. and, and too much of a good thing, too little of a good thing. So that some people have said, you know, Thursday, maybe we shouldn't be doing Thursday. Maybe that's oversaturation. This doesn't sound like oversaturation. This just sounds like more people being able to watch what's already happening. You're not really right. expanding the number of games. You just have more. And I, I don't think that would, I think it makes sense that way in terms of, but do you worry? Are, is there too much? Are there too many games on too many days? We, Joe, we always look at that and we're very cautious. You don't never want to reach that point. But our season is shorter than any other season in professional sports by a long shot. Uh, I think every one of our games means something. Uh, we make them events. Uh, Thursday night is now the number one, number two show in all of entertainment. Right. So for us, we don't think it's reached uh, an oversaturation point, but we're conscious of that. And we're going to make sure that when we do something, we do it well and we do it as an event. Right. There, there are... Uh parts of society that, that, I don't know, they're mad about the kneeling, so you're going to see pictures on certain news sites of stadiums that, that appear to be empty, and I saw a long list of them. Again, they're not empty, but just a lot of, of open seats. It, 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 what do you, how do you uh, explain what's happening in stadiums? Is attendance down in stadiums, and, and what's it due to? The Our attendance is off about 1%, and remember, we have uh, two teams that are going through major transitions in Los Angeles, playing in two different yeah. Prairie stadiums. Yeah, doing well, though. Uh, we have a team that's be moving to Las Vegas shortly, so... Uh, you know, we're very, very pleased where our tenants are. We always want to see those numbers go up, but we're about 98% of capacity. So the seats are, so, what, what, what are those pictures? Well, you what always you? get that when you get that late in the season, particularly if the team isn't in the run and you get that. Uh, the other thing we see an awful lot of, that our stadiums are so good now that fans are staying back inside and enjoying the premium aspect right. of it. And you see a lot of empty seats there, and that's another challenge for us. Well, but we'll, overall, we have to work harder to get people into our stadiums. On the issue of the kneeling, I just have one Colin Kaepernick question. There was reports earlier that the NFL invited Colin Kaepernick to meet uh, with you, mm -hmm. and then that he may have uh, said, yes, I want to do that, but I want to bring a mediator with us, and then the NFL said no. What, what's the state of, of play with these kind of conversations and where you stand on all of this? Well, it's a, it's a little more complicated. We've always invited uh, Colin to come over. Uh, he's welcome to come over and meet at any point in time, so we had an open door on that. There were some meetings set up with the Players Coalition. They were invited by the Players Coalition. My understanding is they extended the invitations in that circumstance. Uh, but he's always welcome to join that. And the Players Coalition is, a, is an entity that we've been working very closely with, and frankly, we've had unprecedented dialogue. Do you think he that. should be playing? You look, you look at the other quarterbacks in the league. I think that's, you know, each, every, every club's got to make those decisions, Andrew. I mean, they make those decisions based on a lot of factors that are best for their football team. And when they do that, that's what's in the best interest. But when you see LeBron James and other people outside of football say he's being blackballed, what do, what do you think about that? Uh, I don't agree with that. Right. Roger, I, I you... Think, again, I think our teams are making the best decisions for what they need as a football team. I, I've gone back and forth on, on uh, the chicken and egg thing. Without the fans, you don't have football. Without the football players, that the, I mean, right. the, there'd be no fans. So it's a, a chicken and egg thing. But uh, you've gotten criticism probably from, you know, you're coddling the players, you're coddling the owners. You're, you've got to take the long game, I, I, I right. would imagine. <laughs> you've got some yes. negotiations coming up down the road with the players you don't want. You know, you don't want the players to, to feel like they're, they're something other than, than employees. I mean, they're, the owners, don't, you know, they, they, they aren't going to tell the players what they absolutely have to do because we all have freedom of speech and everything else. But is there a way to walk that line where you, where you register a protest just not during the anthem? Is that, that's sort of what some teams have come up with. But, I, but you can't, can you actually say don't do it during the anthem? Then that's going to say, you know, there's going to be people that, that chafe under, under that. Well, Joe, we, have, we respect. How are you going to do this? We respect our players. And right. we've had an incredible amount of dialogue between the league, the owners, the players. And what we've tried to do is create a new platform, which you're seeing unfold actually over the last several weeks and, and going forward that is going to give them an opportunity and for us to highlight their important work in the community to make their communities better. And I, we think that that is going to serve. That's what the players really wanted. These are issues 
that we want to address in these communities, and we want the NFL's support. But, but and they're still we'll, kneeling we'll yesterday, uh, quite a few. A right? very limited number, and we think that we're going to be able to address right. that at some point. And in eventually the there'll be... We hope, we hope to get... We want all our players... But it'll never be an edict that says no kneeling during, during the... Or no, or you must stand during the anthem. That's not I think from our standpoint, we think we're going to be able to address this right. effectively. I got uh, one important question for Lowell and one final important question for Roger right. Lowell. Uh, Time Warner, AT&T, Disney, Fox, your take on both. <laughs> well, I, you know, I would have bet, Andrew, I think you and I talked about this at uh, Sun Valley, I would have uh, bet that the AT&T Time Warner deal would get approved. You know, now it's uh, all up in the air. And I, I think that shadow is cast over any media uh, merger here until that's resolved. I don't think you can bet on whether a Disney Fox or anything else would get approved. Does that change your own calculus in terms of deal making? Well, we, you know, we've been very digitally focused for a while. And most of those companies are... There's no overlap, doesn't impact the linear model, and so we think that's an easier path for us, but it's the one we'd be on regardless. I have a follow-up question to that. Um, from a competitive standpoint and then from an industry standpoint, do you hope that that AT&T Time Warner deal goes through? Um, I, you know, I don't think it matters, to be honest. Uh, they, th they certainly think it'll provide some competitive advantage to them, but from an overall industry perspective, I'm not sure it matters. It doesn't matter if it goes, it goes through it goes or not goes through. It doesn't go through. Okay. So uh, time heals hopefully, uh, Commissioner, but I, I just wonder if, if there will ever be possible to, 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 you can't satisfy all the people all the time. It, it seems like there'll be certain fans that are just mad that, that, you know, that, for example, I saw the Army-Navy game and something got retweeted about no one's kneeling for the Army-Navy game. So there's going to be people that, that are, are just upset about that. And there's going to be players that if, if they're not allowed to express themselves about what they see or society's ills, they're never going to be satisfied. So you're never going to, it's not going to be a perfect, I, I don't envy you. Well, I do I envy you, actually. I saw your contract. But, but, no, but, but, I, I, but it is very difficult uh, to, to find a middle ground that satisfies everybody, isn't it? You, I think that's true, and I think what you have to do, particularly when you have 200 million fans, you know, yeah. people have different perspectives. Our players have different perspectives. Our owners have different perspectives. I think what we have been able to demonstrate here, though, is that there's a need for respect and understanding one another and really truly understanding the underlying issues so that we can help address those collectively and hopefully avoid these kind of situations. And that's our hope. Yep. We want all our players standing. We want all our personnel standing. Have you spoken to Jerry Jones? You guys okay? What yes. The, oh, sure. Yeah. Did you see the viewers have and they want, to know, they want to know about the con. They want to know about the plan. The, was the plane request real? That's what they want to know. What plane request? <laughs> Where'd you get that? Yeah, no. Uh, it, I guess you, you go ahead. You. The, 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 no, the, I'm looking at the tweet. The, the report uh, about a plan, plane for life. I would want the plane for life too, by the way. No, I, anything I'll have as far as access to an airplane, I pay for. So. Yeah. Okay. I Fair tried enough. to undercut you. I did. I said, I'll do it for 20 plus a turbo prop. <laughs> and uh, I had no takers, though. Uh, no takers, though, either. Actually, actually, yesterday, you watched the poor Giants with. Uh, I mean, yes, that was Jerry Jones' team looked pretty good yesterday. You don't you don't play they, favorites though. And no, well, you know, listen, I, it was a great day of football yesterday. It was good. We, I saw we, a lot. I sat from the first game all the way through. Not for the Jets. Spectacular. Not for the Jets. Well, again, but. you know, everyone everyone's going to lose on a Sunday, but or half of the teams are going to lose on a Sunday, and it's just been a great, be great season. Yeah. <laughs> all right, very good. Okay. Um, thank thanks. you both. Thank you. Really appreciate you, it. Thank you, guys. You, you knew you were going to be sitting for a lot of it, I guess. That's all right. Uh, it's, all, it's all good. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah, a good yeah, partner yeah, here. Yeah, so we're, we're, hey, thanks for coming on, though, too. Thank you, guys. Okay, well, I'm, I'm on my Verizon phone today, so I'm going to check this out. That's thank good. you, guys. Okay. Stay safe, please, today, especially. <laughs> thank you. You bet. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.